moments ago, we heard from Governor Mark Dayton. With just 13 hours left to pass bills in the legislative session, most major bills, including a tax cut bill and a budget bill, even the bonding bill, are not completed. And the gap between the governor and Republican legislative leaders on most major issues remains, to say the least, significant. Joining us now, the Republican House Speaker of Minnesota, House Speaker Kurt Dowd. Mr. Speaker, thank you so much for coming in. Good morning, Esme. Oh, well, good morning to you. I know you I know you were up all, all night uh, and only had a few hours sleep, so thank you for coming in. Actually, it hasn't been that bad. We were uh, done at 2.30 in the morning last night, and that's the latest and the only time we've had a late night session this whole year. So uh, this the session's been pretty smooth. Pretty smooth. Okay, well, <laughs> I think the governor begs to differ. He called it a shambles and the worst session he's ever seen. Well, you know, I, I feel sometimes like I'm in the movie, I'm stuck in the movie Groundhog Day, where every day I wake up and the governor's not willing to negotiate, not willing to come to the table, and at the end he wants every single thing that he, uh, that he asked for. Um, we had a, a, a budget bill that was up on the House floor last night. Uh, we received a list of 117 items uh, late the night before that he found objectionable. We actually fixed uh, about two thirds of those completely and, and the most objectionable ones were removed. Um, so we've met him far more than halfway uh, and, and I think that shows in good faith. We really wanna get these bills signed but ultimately I can't sign bills into law and when, what I think this governor sometimes forgets is he doesn't get to write and pass the bills. Um, it is two co-equal branches of government and he does need to respect the legislature as well. Well it does sound like he is open at least is what he said a few minutes ago to signing the supplemental budget bill which was put together overnight. I mean is that a sign of progress? Well I think that it is and I think as he realizes what's in that bill uh, there's a lot of important priorities in that bill for both of us. Uh, I think he'll realize uh, that it's something that probably needs his signature. All right. How about the bonding bill? I didn't get a chance to ask him about that, but he said, you know, before uh, the show that he was hopeful that something could be breached there because you both are very, very part, far apart, hundreds of millions of dollars. And these are public works projects that everybody needs. I think he accepts the fact that we're going to send a bonding bill at a number that's lower than what he wanted. And I think we've, we've made a good faith effort to put projects in that we know that he wants. So uh, my hope is, and, and I know that he'll sign whatever bill we send him, but um, he's not necessarily the obstacle on those. It's, it's we need to have Democrat votes in the House and the Senate uh, to pass that bill. So we've been negotiating over the last 24 hours with uh, with those folks and we hope to get a bill that invests in Minnesota's infrastructure uh, on his desk today. We only have about four or five more bills to pass. Um, so today should be a, a fairly productive and, and smooth day. And you are certainly very optimistic after am, a long night. Okay, um, let me ask you, the governor really is passionate. I was at his news conference on Monday where he said he wasn't going to sign your tax bill until he got $138 million of emergency funding uh, for schools, 40, 59 school districts across the state that are facing a shortfall. He's adamant about this. Yet Republicans are saying this really isn't a crisis. Well, it's not that we're thinking it's not a crisis. We know there are schools that are in a, a, a budget uh, situation where they could use some extra resources. We're going to do one better. Uh, the governor's proposal was for $130 million. Uh, we're going to put a proposal on our tax bill today and send it to the governor's desk um, that gives, to, uh, gives school districts access to about $225 million. Um, but this, this, what the governor says, is that's really not new money. This is sort of maneuvering of existing funds, uh, loosening the, the regulations around these existing funds. Well, again, we're back in Groundhog's Day. It's funny, back in 13 and 14, this is exactly the sort of mechanism that the governor used to make sure that schools had access to the resources they need so they didn't have to lay off teachers and they didn't have to reduce class sizes. Um, this is exactly, and it does include new money. It includes about $50 million of new money um, in this bill and then uh, about $175 million uh, of access to money that they can transfer from other funds um, within their own budgets uh, that will give them access to those dollars. We also have about $50 $50 million of school safety money that we're going to put on the governor's desk. Half of that in the bonding bill, half of it was in the budget bill that we sent last night. That's also about twice what the governor's plan was. Right. So we are committed to make sure we're okay. make sure we're funding our schools. Okay, there was yet another gun control, uh, pro-gun control protest at the Capitol yesterday. The group that organized that say they're calling off today's protest because there's no hope. The governor said it's because Republican legislators are in the hands of the NRA. Earlier in this session, you indicated that you might be receptive to some kind of gun control measure. What happened to that and is that just obviously completely off the table as 
many pro gun control advocates are saying. You know, my, my hope was that both sides could come to the table together and really work through these issues, but uh, unfortunately I think they've become so uh, emotionally entrenched in their positions that um, those good conversations didn't really happen. Um, there are a couple of Great. proposals out there, I know one at least, that would increase background checks in Minnesota um, that, that pro-gun uh, excuse me, pro-gun rights legislators would support, um, but unfortunately it came so late in the process that it probably won't make it. Fortunately, we have the strongest gun control laws in the country here in Minnesota, and, and we really did that uh, after the, the Cold Spring Recorey shooting. Um, we kind of revisited all those laws, and uh, we already have a, a lot of the strong background checks and other things that, that other states don't have, so we're in a better situation than most. I want to ask you very quickly, the veto of the $9 million for the deputy registrars because of the Min Laws, Min Laws problem, it sounds like you may have the votes to override that veto. Very unusual that, situation. That, uh, we haven't had a veto override vote since this governor has been in office in eight years. Uh, this might be the first one. Um, this do you, is do you really, have the votes? Well, there was 101 votes for that bill going off the House floor. We need 90 to override the veto. Um, this is a great example of how the governor asks for us to send something individually. Um, and then when we send it individually, he vetoed this bill, which is so important for these deputy registers, some of whom uh, are, are running their business on their credit card right now. Uh, but we sent it by itself, uh, and then he says, uh, he vetoes it and says, I'm, I'm vetoing it because it doesn't have a whole bunch of other things in it. Um, so you can't have it both ways. This is important funding that these deputy registers need, and, and we will look at taking up a veto override today. Okay. Well, Speaker Kurtout, thank you so much for coming in. Obviously, you're very, very busy and didn't get a lot of sleep, uh, <laughs> and we certainly will be watching over the next 13 hours to see what you can accomplish. Sounds great. Thank right. you, Esme. Thank you Good so morning. much.